So, so um, no fluff. So what we're gonna learn straight away, I don't have a source sheet this time. You're gonna have to trust me on what I say. The reason I don't have a source sheet is because what we wanna learn, if I would have to print it, it would take us like 10 pages because we're gonna go through lots of sources in one go. So in this week's parasha, this year was called um, the secret matchmaker, I think. So in this week's parasha, um, the, the whole story is about a shidduch, basically. Then the main, the main, mainly the, the real story is about the guy who does the shidduch. So who is that guy that makes the shidduch? Do you know? Eli? Eliezer. Eliezer. How do you know it's Eliezer? He has Mason swear to him. Who? How do you know it's Eliezer? Doesn't have his name. Let's read what it says. Vayomer Avram el Avdo. Avram said to his slave, Zikan Beito, the master of his house, Hamoshel bechol asherlo, who, how do you say Moshel bechol asherlo? Everyone speaks Hebrew. Master of the... Master of everything he deserves. Sim na yadcha tachat yechadri, put your hand um, on my breast, basically, and I, and I will um, and swear. So, does that say, do we, how do we know it's Eliezer? Well, He's the slave. So why doesn't it say his name? Okay, so let's continue. I'm going to read another pasuk. So Av- Avram tells him, listen, you have to go get me a wife. Don't get me a wife from the Knanim. I live, I live among the Knanim. Don't get me a Knani woman. Go get me someone from a different country. So the slave said to him, maybe she won't come. Should I take Yitzchak to her? If I find a woman, should I take Yitzchak to her? And Avram says, No. Don't, mustn't take Yitzchak out of Eretz Yisrael. That's the discussion. And what, and then, and, and if she doesn't come, so, you know, you're clean of this oath between us. Go find a woman, bring her here. If she doesn't want to come, the last thing you take, do is take Yitzchak out of Eretz Yisrael. So, that's the agreement. Vayasem ha'eve, that he had also the slave, put his hand on, the, on this verse, and they swore. So, so till here, doesn't, we, know, we don't know anything but the fact that he's an uh, Eved. What? But he's Eliezer. He's uh, Eved. Eliezer. Eliezer. Well, we, we don't know it's Eliezer. We just know it's a story about an Eved. Pasuk Yud, Vaykach Eved. So the slave took 10 camels, da 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 And then he, he goes to um, the well. Maybe we'll speak about that in a second. And then he says a tefillah to Hashem, and he makes with Hashem a deal. What's the deal? Who remembers? What's the deal Hashem makes with Hashem? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait in the, in, in the well while all the girls come out. Now, why, why were the girls at the well in the evening? Who knows? In those days. No, so, so why, how, did you, how did you know he would find that um, single woman? It went for a shit of time. Yeah, but why go specifically to the well? So to, we have to understand that in the olden days, where everyone would meet, these days it's Pizza Sababa, but those days it was at the well, like going to the well. No, so the, the men used to work, this is a very um, Patri, 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 Patri Eiko, Patri Acho, how do you say that? Mm-hmm. Second one. Okay, and um, society. So um, the married woman with kids would stay at home and take care of the kids. The men from age 13 to age, whenever they died, 100, would work in the field and come back at the evening. So who would make sure there's water for dinner and for, and for bathing, the, bathing everyone's feet and everything? So the single girls, that's what happened, used to go just before sunset, just before everyone comes home to go get water. So everyone knew, if you want to find a single girl, you go to the well. Who else went to the well and found a single girl? Single guy. Yaakov. Yaakov. Who else went to the well except Yaakov and found in, in the well and found a girl? Moshe. 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 Interesting. Everyone found their women, their, their wives, in the well. Uh-huh. Yeah, so do they take a bear, Miriam, but it's not No, bear, Miriam is a different, it's a different okay, thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's an interesting thing, the well. I'm sure there's lots of depth in it, but Bichal just technically, that's, that's where everyone would meet, in the well. Mm-hmm. So that's where he goes. It's a good place to find the Shidduch. And then he says, mm-hmm. okay, how am I going to know which is the right woman for Yitzchak? How, there's lots of girls here. How, how do I know? So he makes a sign. What's the sign? I'm going to come to the first girl that comes out. I'm going to ask her to give me some water. Because I'm very tired. I just walked for many days. Very tired. If she says, please have some water, and I will also give water to your camels, that is a sign from Hashem that she is the one. So firstly, just interesting question. Is that like, you know, there's a halacha, you're not allowed to, to make signs, right? You're not allowed to, it's like, it's called nichush. You're not allowed to do nichush. So what do you think? Does Eliezer here really mean make signs? Like if you say Hashem, if 
um, if if seven cars go quickly now, so I'll marry the father. I'll marry her. See, so but that's actually specifically forbidden. Yeah, yeah. it's only pushed. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> or if you say, listen, if I go under, if I go under a ladder, so I'll die. If I see seven cats, it's, it's only chush, yeah. This one, this one was not in a, this one was not only a sign, it was a midah. Oh, was oh, a yeah, very good. So this is not, so, so there's a machloket in the Gemara. Yeah, fair. Is, there, is, it, is it just a random sign? Or is he actually, it seems that he's doing a, a character test, right? It's not a sign. He's saying, listen, I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a girl who goes beyond what's expected. By the way, why is that what? Why is she looking specifically for that character trait? What do you think? Chesed. Chesed. Why specifically that? What do you think? No. Remember what we learned last week. Whoever was here. No. Huh? Let's assume it is Eliezer. Eliezer knows one thing about his master. What does he know about his master? About his family? They are obsessed with going beyond what you need to for others. So how am I going to find a woman? I can look for a pretty woman. I can look for a rich woman. I can look for a gentle woman. I can look, I can look for someone who's very soft, very kind. How, well, what am I looking for? Says, I'm looking for someone that when I say, give me water, she says, no, no, for you, for your candles too. And believe, believe it or not, before he even finishes to say the words, he who tell him, he didn't even finish the sentence. He doesn't know her, called Rivka. She starts walking towards the well. And he runs to her, and she's very beautiful, of course. So the Eved runs to her. Please give me some water. So what does she say, by the way? What does she answer? Who remembers? Does she say, okay, I'll give you on the camels? What do you think? She did it. She, she did it. She did it. Yes, yeah, so she doesn't say, I'll give you the camels too. She says the following. Drink. She did everything very fast. She took the, the whatever, how do you say, kad, the, Pitcher off her shoulder, and she and she fed him. But she finished giving him water. But Tomer, and now she says, only when she finishes, I'll also get water for your camels. And she runs runs again. So she, she puts the pitcher in the in the well. And she runs to the to the to the well again, and she brings water to all of the camels. We know we had ten ten camels. So just by the way, Shulam Aleichem, So all these, all this running for Chesed, does it remind you of anyone? Does it remind you of anyone? Oh, this running? Very good. We read last week, when, when, the, when, the, when the angels come. So, Vayarot Tzikratam, Abraham runs to the angels. And then, please have some water. Vayimaher Lechem, Vayimaher Avraham, Avraham goes quickly to the tent. It's much the same words. Vayimaher, Vayarot. So Eliezer sees this girl and says, oh my gosh. She's exactly like Abraham. When it comes to Achmasat or when it comes to feeding others, she just goes crazy. She just does everything fast. And she gives drink, uh, water to all the camels. And now, interestingly enough, now it says the following. Ve'ha'ish mishta'ela. So, the ish, who's the ish? Eliezer. He's surprised. He's amazed. Machrish ladat, and he's silent. Ha'itzliach Hashem darko imlo. So he's, he's just waiting to see, is, is she the right one? And when all the, all the camels are finished drinking, the ish, the, the ish, he takes lots of jewelry, and he asks her who she is, and she says she's from Avram's family, basically, and then he knows, right? And then she goes home, she calls Lavan, and then Lavan sees that he's rich. So, Eliezer doesn't have a name in this story at the moment, right? What is he called? What are his two names? <laughs> Eved and Ish. And he's got another one other name, Beruch Adonai or Beruch Hashem, right? By the way, who else is called Beruch Hashem in the whole Torah? Remembers? No. The, the, only, the truth is not exactly that. The only other person, to be honest, is Abraham. When Abraham goes to fight, um, the four kings. So Malkitzedek, king of Shalem, comes out and says, Baruch Ata Le'el Elyon. Kodesh Ma'ila. Ah! Baruch Avraham. Yeah. So maybe it reminds us of Avraham. The Seder. Is it UK Babkid? Yeah, here it says UK Babkid. Why didn't he see Eliezer? 
who are, why is it Eliezer? No, Lavan sp- speaks to Eliezer and says, come here, Baruch Hashem. That's what he's telling him. <coughs> so interesting enough, Rashi there says that he looked like Abraham. That's why he said Baruch Hashem, because he looked like Abraham. So interesting. So those are, those are his two names. So what it, what, now what do you think? Why, why is, firstly, these are questions. Firstly, why doesn't it say his name anyway? What we're learning now, by the way, is extremely deep. I know it sounds simple, but I think it's very deep. Why doesn't it say his name anywhere? And why is he first called the Eved? And then called the Ish? And then called the Baruch Hashem? Question number two. And do you know anywhere else in the Torah where someone isn't using his name, rather in the way people speak to him or speak of him? Do you have any examples? So three questions. Firstly, why doesn't it say his name? What do you think? Secondly, what did the ch- what it, why is he first called the Eved and then the Ish? What's the meaning of that? And... Thirdly, does it, is there anywhere else that you can think of? It's a bit of a challenging question. Like Kohelet. Kohelet. No, it's actually in last week's parasha. Ishtam? No, Ishtam is not yet. Okay, so let's start with last week's parasha. Let's start with the question, question number three. So, I don't know if you remember last week's parasha. Straight after Sarah gives birth to Yitzchak, she sees Ishmael doing shtuyas, being silly with Yitzchak. And then what does she ask Abraham to do? to kick Ishmael out of the house. And what does Abraham do? He gets very upset. And then Hashem says, listen to your wife. And he kicks him, Hagar and the son out. Then what does Hagar do with the child? She throws him under one of the bushes. And then Hashem appears to Hagar and says, well, there's water here, don't worry about it. I hope you read it on Lashon. Does everyone know, does everyone know what I'm speaking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So interestingly enough, if you look at that, it doesn't say anywhere in, that, in, that, in last week, it doesn't say anything about Ishmael. Really, you have Sarah. So Sarah sees at Ben Hagar Mitzrit. Asher yaldah leAbraham etzachek. So Sarah sees the son of the son of Egyptian Hagar doing shtuyas. Vatomer leAbraham garesh amazot vednat to send her away. Kilo iraz nera vayira davar meod ben Abraham. So Abraham gets very upset. Alodot bno. So Abraham is very upset to hear about his son. So already he's got two nicknames. One nickname is the son of the Egyptian slave. That's how Sarah calls him. How does Abraham call him? My son. And then he gets very upset and then Hashem tells him, send her out. And then, and Hagal takes him. Then she's scared he's going to die. So then he says, so she sits somewhere and she puts the kid somewhere away because she doesn't want to see him die. So what does it say? Ki amra al ere bemot hayaled. I don't want to see the yeled, the child die. And then Hashem hears the child crying. So what does it say? No. Na'ar. So I don't understand. Is he a Yelid, a Na'ar, the son of Egyptian Hagar, or Abraham's son? What is he? So you can see that sometimes it doesn't say someone's name. This is also written one because if it only because there's like something in the story changes. The the person changes in the story. So in Sarai's, in Sarai's perspective, this kid is just the son of the slave, the Egyptian slave. In Abraham's perspective, Ishmael is my son. In Hagar's perspective, Ishmael is my yelid, my child. And in Hashem's eyes, he's a now already. Ishmael wasn't a kid. He wasn't a child. He was a big boy already. But in Hagar's mind, he was her baby. So it's interesting. Huh? So the same story happens here with Eliezer. It doesn't say his name once. That's why I asked you, who is it? We just assume it's Eliezer. By the way, it's very possible that it wasn't Eliezer. Maybe Abraham had a different slave. Till this day, we don't know. I mean, the Midrash and Rashi say it was Eliezer, but it doesn't say anywhere in the Pesukim. We just assume, because that's, we know that Abraham had a slave called Eliezer, so we assume it's him. But it doesn't actually say that it was him. But first he's called a Eved, and then he's called a Ish. So wh- why do you think his name changes, and who changes it? His function was more important at the beginning than his name. That's why they, they define him as a vet because he has a mission. Yeah, very good. So first he doesn't say his name because he has a mission. So, so it's like what is important is not who he is, it's the mission that he has. Very good. When he succeeds, he became a ish. When he succeeds, he becomes a ish. He didn't succeed yet. No. And he just, he just saw it happen. He just saw Rivka giving him water. And then Rivka says, Vatere et ish. And Navan also calls him a ish. He's in the process to succeed. He found, he made the sign, the sign succeed. He had the... So why does, and why, so why does, that, why does he turn into an ish now? Why, what, is, what does that mean? 
Ishes means someone very important. Yeah, that means that he, now he's part of the story of the building of the Jewish nation. Like he, now he, he made something, he was just an event, uh -huh. and now he made something, he's in the process, and after when you arrive, like, Interesting. He, he, even more for the success, he's like Baruch Hashem, because... But I, I, I have a kushia on you, ready? It says ish, 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 ish. And then they, they invite him home. They bring him home and they give him food and they wash his feet. And the father and brother put food in front of him. I'm not eating till I say what I want to say. What does he say? He remembers. I'm an Eved. I'm not a Ish. Right? So uh, Eliezer is very important. The first thing he says, so who thinks he's a Ish? So according to what we said in Ishmael, the name changes according to how people perceive him. So now think, I know this is very deep stuff, I know, but it's just, I think it's brilliant. I read it, I, I heard it. I don't know when, but I just think it's brilliant idea. So think of Rivka goes to the well. And she sees someone there. She, has, she, has, she doesn't know anything. You don't know who. Someone with 10 camels, Lots of gold. She doesn't know who's a slave. What is here in her eyes? A very important ish. A very important rich man who she wants to allow in. What is Lavansi, by the way? A very important rich man he can make money off. But no one knows he's an Evid. So the question is straight away, why doesn't Eliezer straight away say, I'm not an ish, I'm an Evid. What is he waiting for? They call him ish, then they bring him in. They call him Baruch Hashem. It's even more of a more of a compliment. Why do you stand outside? I have space for you. So Vayavoy Shabbatay comes in and they take his camels and they give the camels food and they what they bathe him and they give him food and only then he speaks. So I'll tell you what I the sentence I heard about this, which was beautiful. You know, there's a midrash that says in Hebrew, I'll say in Hebrew, then translate it to English. Yafasichatan shall of day shall I'm going to translate it. Yoter mi toratan shel banim. That's what Zash says. That the discussions of the slaves of the forefathers are more meaningful, more important than the Torah of the forefathers, because the story of Eliezer, no, of, the of the of the of the children, because the story of Eliezer takes about it's a whole parsha. The whole parsha of Chayzer is it's about easily sixty psukim, seventy psukim, and the halacha of I don't even know, Sheretz or something like that, or something which is Doraita, I don't know, Mikveh, is about three words in the Torah. So, how did, so, so that, that's a, an, an, an idea of itself, but I would say that Yafa Shtikatan, Sheref Devot, the fact that Eliezer doesn't say who he is for a bit of time, so why didn't he straight away say, listen, I'm not an Ish, I'm a slave. What, what is he waiting for? What do you think? He waits till they bring him into the house, Till they bathe him, till they give him food. And only then he says, wait, I've got something to tell you. Imagine if I was a slave, and I come here and I've got a message to Jody, and then Jody says, oh, look at this rich man. And then she brings me in, and I'm please, this is your room. Have a shower. I'll give you some food. What are you waiting for? Why are you saying, wait, 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 there's a mistake here. They would have made him sleep outside with the camera. And then and what would happen? They never get to... Uh... Say what, he to say. what does he want he to say? To yeah, very good. That's the depth here. In order for the Ezel to, in order for the Shlichut to be as best as possible, the Ezel actually needs to act as a Ish. Very deep. The Ezel knows that now, okay, they think I'm important. They think I'm important. They're bringing me in. They're giving me food. They, they, they respect me. Now they're willing to listen to me. It just shows how the Ezel is devoted to this idea of, I need to find a wife for Yitzchak. I'll just say, I think, why is it powerful for me just at the moment? Because, well, obviously, I mean, I, everyone always tells me, Abichai, you know, maybe set up this guy with this guy. And I'm like, yeah, it's a nice idea. Maybe make a phone call. Yeah. Like, I'm not devoted to it. Bichal. I'll be honest, like, don't, don't judge me, but... <laughs> I don't know, I'm busy, I've got kids. I don't like I, animals, we've already yeah. <laughs> No, like, it's not like... But I, what I hear from you is, if you want to set someone up, you got to be devoted, boy. Like, you need a... 
You need to do everything to make it work. You even need, we're going to see now, I don't know how much time we have, we're going to finish in a few minutes, that Eliezer actually changes the story that happened. And all the Mephashim ask why. He cha- he, when he tells Davan and the whole story, he changes a few facts. Changes a few facts. For example, he says that she straight away gave water to the camels, which is not what happened. He says that Abraham told him to find someone from his family, which isn't what happened. And we see that Eliezer, Eliezer has one thing in his mind, one thing in his mind, and he's willing to lie for it, to find Yitzchak, a wife. And I thought that was a very powerful message. So that's one thing. Yeah, very clever. And now, and you'll see at the end, you see in the end that in the, when the end of the story, maybe I'll just read to you the last pasuk and we'll finish with this because we need to eat. So look at the last pasuk. So Rivka comes with him and she goes with him on the camel with Eliezer and they go to see Yitzchak. We're going to finish with this. Let's listen to this pasuk. So now we're in the end of the story. So now we jumped like 50 pasuk. We'll finish with this. So Yitzchak goes to Davin in the field. Vaisainav picks up his eyes, and he sees, he sees camels, camels coming. But he saw Rivka and Rivka picks up her eyes, and she sees Yitzchak, and she falls off the camel. What did she say? Does anyone remember? So Rivka tells to the slave, Mi ha'ish halaze ha'olech basadeh. Do you think Eliezer cares? At the moment, till, till now, Rivka always saw Eliezer as a ish. But the second she sees Yitzchak, she tells the Eved, who is that ish? So the Eved answers, Eliezer sees himself, who Adoni? He is my master. But he covers herself, and then she covers herself, then Yitzchak brings her home, and that's the end of the story. So it's interesting to see, yeah. Maybe there is, when he was with Lavan, Called Ish. Very when he was with Yitzchak, he's called Very Eliezer good. because comparing. To comparing, but why does Eliezer do that? Oh, that's a good question. Do you think Eliezer is enjoying the respect? He's enjoying to be important? I think that he's doing it from, from a tactical point of view. I think that's a very important message to life. Like sometimes you need to fake it. If you've got a mission, you know, don't say everything. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe this is a tip for, for married life, I guess, but it's something very deep that I. I learned very much this week. I was learning a different story in Yevamot, but um, it's from last week's parasha that Hashem lied to Avraham about Sarah. You know that story? Hashem lied. Hashem, Hashem, not some human. Hashem lied to Avraham in order that Avraham and Sarah would have Shalom Bayit. So I started doing it. I lied to my wife the whole time. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But I'll tell. Where was the case? Where you So Sarah, Hashem, the angels told Sarah, "You're gonna have a baby." So the Pasuk says, Sarat Sachaka Bekirba, she, she oh, laughed. Vatomer, Ech Eled, Vadonizaken. My husband is old. And the Shem tells Abraham, Lama Zet Sachaka Sarah Lemo, why did Sarah laugh to say, Because I said, Vadonizakanti, and I'm old? Hai Paled Avarma Hashem? Is there something I can't do? You think? And so the Gemara said, So Hashem lied for Shlom Bai. And the Gemara doesn't say Hashem lied, it says, Shina, Shina Etaimet. He changed the truth. But I was thinking to myself, what's the big deal? Like Hashem would have told Abraham, listen, she said you're too old. So what? So sorry, Abraham would have said, oof, it's a bit harsh. What? He said about himself. Yeah. Sure. Nahan. Like, but what's the big deal? He doesn't want to be seen like that in her eyes. You know? Fed, but, it's, but I'm saying it's very gentle. Like for Hashem to lie, Hashem, who is the, the only thing we know about Hashem is that he's MS. For Hashem to change the truth, for such a small thing. He just didn't say something. Yeah. No. no. He yeah. said Sarah said she was old. Sarah said, she said she yeah, Sarah, no, Sarah said he's old. No, she said, so, so no, no, no. So Sarah said, said he's old. Said old. I I tell you, I don't is again. After me, I, I stopped my menopause or my period. I can't, I can't, you know. The Adoni, but my husband, he's old. So Sarah, Hashem says, why did she say? She said she's old. She never said she's old. She said he's old. Right, she said she's So what? Hashem can make that out. really weird. It doesn't make any sense. Why? That Hashem lied. No, it doesn't make any sense that she would say the reason because she had menopause for him and he's 
No, it's not the reason why she has blood. No, there's two reasons why. No, she has two reasons. Achleb bloti Italian. Now my skin is bloti. My skin is baluy. My skin is wrinkled. Wrinkled. Well, I'm gonna be young again. It's also meaning to say that she. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say the Gemara learns. Maybe. Okay. It's a good point. The Gemara learns from here, and it's a halacha. Mutar leshanot b'shvil shalom. You're allowed to change. נכון, אהרון הקדוש, זה בעצם מדרש, נכון, וזה גמר מה משה זה, זה גמר אין יבמות, זה בסדר, כן. לממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממממ
Okay, so quickly go around the circle and say if it. So why don't we bring the pizza over here and then we could do the snack? Uh, okay. okay.